Okay, so we've been looking at some pretty simple examples, so let's try something that's a little more complicated, all right? I want to look at sort of a shuttlecock shaped filter. Now, a shuttlecock is used in badminton. Uh, you may or may not know what badminton is, but it's a game where you have basically a ball on the bottom connected to something that, uh, some sort of conical thing that uh, is connected at, you know, the center of the ball. So basically it would look like this, right? And this looks a little bit like the filter that I have in my sink, right? So my sink, it's a little more complicated, but still this particular um, shape is a lot more complicated than anything we've looked at. And it's basically something that I'm going to have to cut into two parts, right? I've got to cut it, I've got this um, ball on the bottom and I've got this cone on the top. And then I've got all this other fun stuff over here, right? So I've got my, uh, you know, I start de trying to define this um, thing. I'm going to have to define my axes and all those other fun things and so forth. And um, I'm just going to have a flow going straight down this way, a velocity, uh, a mass flow. So let's, let's see, I don't really remember what mass flow is. Let's just call it m dot. I think that's what we call it in thermodynamics when I taught thermodynamics. So, um, so we'll use that mass flow going down through this thing. Um, and let's just see what we can do to figure this out. How do you think you'd figure this out, right? So we've got this ball down here, um, which is a hemisphere of radius, um, let's say A, and then it comes up from that in this cone area here, there's an imaginary cone here uh, with a radius b, how would you define that, right? And, you know, you can say, all right, well, you know, I know how to define that, right? Um, you know, using all this geometry stuff that I've been using earlier, right? So if I say, okay, um, c is down here somewhere, right? I've got some constant. Um, z plus that con uh, the z value plus that constant is going to equal the um, radius of the cone for that part. So uh, the conical part has something like z plus c is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's going to define every point on this. Uh, conical part, and um, then you say, okay, well, what about here? What about this part right there? Um, now what we want to do is we want this thing to um, define, a, define a sphere, right? A hemisphere, right? So around this part here. So that is, oh, actually, I probably want to Paraboloid is what I want, not a sphere. We'll just go with the sphere. Um, the problem with the spherical part is that the derivatives don't match, uh, but that's not going to worry, that's not something we have to worry about. If you were going to do this correctly, this should be a paraboloidal part, and um, then you want to match the derivatives here and here. We'll just match sort of the edges. And, and just say, okay, even though this is a circle and it's going directly up and then this thing goes like this, like a, like a real shuttlecock does, and actually that's pretty close to what my um, filter does as well. Um, even though we've got something like that and we want to find the flow through it, um, I, I think we'll, we'll be fine with that, right? There's not an issue there. So in that case, we just have, um, what, uh, z squared is equal to um, the square root of x squared plus y squared, and uh, we'll have to specify z is less than zero. Um, so this is z is greater than zero. And, this is, and also z is less than um, h, whatever the height is. All right. Um, and then we've, we have our flow. And we just said that the um, mass flow is m dot minus m dot z hat. So it's going downwards, right? And that is how we set that guy up. Now we want to find um, the flux. 
um, or the total amount of stuff coming through there. And we'll just call that phi. Um, and what would phi be equal to? It's just um, the double integral over this surface here of um, m dot dotted into uh, the surface element, which is the normal times the surface element like that. So we can work with that, right? Or maybe we could be sneaky. Why don't we be sneaky? Wouldn't it be better to be sneaky? So, you know, since there's no source on the inside of this filter, right? What we could do is we could just find how much stuff is going in um, through here, right? And that's going to be exactly as much as going out through the rest of the thing. I think that would be a lot easier, don't you? Why don't we do the easier thing, right? Um, so the first thing we have to do is actually check if there's a source in the filter. And I'm telling you there's not, and there's an easy way to check that, right? And the way you check that is you you take the um you take the divergence of your of your um velocity field or your mass flow field and since m dot is a constant that's equal to zero and so that's true no source that makes us happy right Okay, so now that we're happy and we know we can um, do this little trick, uh, we'll go. To, we'll go ahead and just find phi in because we know phi in through here because we know phi out through that. It's going to be the same thing. So that's going to be the uh, well. It's actually minus phi out, right, or whatever. So um, that's equal to uh, minus the. Uh, Actually, it's going to be minus the minus and blah, blah, blah. So let's just do the double integral of um, m dot times uh, ds, right? Which is just going to be the area, because this is a constant, right? So let's just, let's do that formally, m dot times the double integral, right, of r ds. So this is the area, and we know the area of this thing, right? It's going to be this height h plus c, because that's the radius. So um, that's going to be m dot times pi times h plus c, actually squared, because it's, a, it's the area. So that's all we need to do. Um, we could try to find this c. Right? Why don't, we, why don't we do that? Right? I've only spent a couple of minutes talking about this. Actually, finding that constant is something we can do. Um, because we know that um, the slope, right, is, um, you know, dz, or no, d, um, r dz of. Uh, of this of this part here, we know that is um, the change in z over or no change in say uh, r over the change in z, and the change in z is h, and the change in that radius is um, b minus a, right? And we know what what the value is here. We know that value is r, right? So um, we want to find um, this spot here. So we know that uh, z plus c is equal to uh, r. And um, And so that means that um, C is actually just going to be equal. No, no, no. 
Okay, now I've got myself confused. That's always nice. Um, so Z. Yeah, so um, if I've got Z plus C is equal to R, right? That means that uh, dr dz is equal to 1, right? So I actually don't have to worry about all of that stuff, actually. Um, C is just going to be equal to uh, r. Okay, so we can just throw that r in there. So that, so this is actually equal to um, m dot pi big R plus h squared, which is actually even better. So I probably should have been more careful here and added some sort of constant for this this guy here. Um, but, you know, live and learn. Live and learn. So we're perfectly fine, and that is how, how we find that, and we even get this in terms of real values with the um, filter and the flow. So we're not even stuck with that stupid constant. We have a real constant, a real physical constant, the kind of constant that you, um, you, you know, you can get your, get your teeth around and um, chew vigorously. All right. So I will talk to you later. Have a fun time and um, I'll see you in class. Bye now.